I'm Diane and this is Narrow Dreams. Um, to say it's it's been um, an odd couple of weeks, I think for all of us, is, is quite an understatement really. It, it just feels quite surreal, um, all this, everything on the news is coronavirus. Um, you stop and talk to people, that's, that's all that people are talking about. Um, and there's lots and lots of advice from the government, from the NHS, uh, and a lot of it's applicable, obviously, the, the washing hands thing, the, um, you know, covering your mouth if you're, if you're coughing or sneezing with a tissue, not your hand, um, and then bin that. Um, that, that applies to anybody and, and to sort of keep your distance from people not going to very crowded places if if you don't have to but some of the advice would be quite difficult to to follow on a boat um and that's the sort of thing that i want to discuss really um a lot of people are worried i'm worried to be honest um i have got underlying health issues i'm sure i'd be fine but it but it is still worrying um, and obviously we've all got friends and, and family i've got a, a 90 year old father who's in a care home um, we went to see him last Friday, but we probably won't be going now for, for quite some time because obviously um, we don't want to, to put him at any extra risk. Um, so it's it's things like that. Um, but on the more practical side, um, I thought I would just um, have a look at how boaters may have to do things slightly differently. We are making sure that we're uh, we've got enough coal um, and we're keeping the water full. You can see over there there's the the water tap is directly opposite our boat so that's fairly easy um, but you know we're, we're fairly isolated here I mean you can see other boats um, but we don't very often sort of see that many other people. The only people that, that come down our um, path are the people that are actually at these boats on the garden moorings. Um, so, you know, it is, it is fairly isolated anyway, but the good thing is it's close enough to other people so that, you know, if anybody does need help, um, it's fairly easy to, to get that help. There should be people around. One major difference I've noticed that I didn't really think about until yesterday, um, but it has been quite different over the last few days, is the sky that you can see now is a direct flight path to um, Robin Hood Airport at Doncaster. And I mean, it's not a massive airport, but there's usually a plane going over at least every 20 minutes. There's hardly any. We're, we're seeing... Well, I, I don't even recall seeing one yesterday or hearing one because we're near them inside the boat. And there just aren't any. One thing we have found that we've had to change um, is our shopping habits. Uh, no, we haven't been out and... and done a lot of panic buying um, any of you that live on a boat will know that's not that easy to do really because there are um, not that many places to store excess stuff on a boat um, but normally what I do is because um, I take my son to work every day uh, near where he works there is a supermarket um, that is usually really quiet actually because it's sort of a bit out of the way um, and it, it's usually really quiet so I just normally call in and get what we need for the day and that's fine well this weekend we decided no we'd go and stock up with a week shopping um, just in case you know we did have to isolate at least we've got a, a week's worth of, of food in uh, so we went and, and did that um, that obviously does cause its own problems as I say it's it's trying to find places for that on a boat. So we only have the the tiniest of, of fridges as you can see it's it's absolutely stuffed full. This is literally just a week's shopping. We've got a couple of lots of meat in the freezer there um, but 
you know, you just can't get any more in. That is the limit of our fridge. So there is no chance of panic buying. The cupboard is pretty much the same, just all the saucers and things like that. A um, bit of pasta, a few tin things. Got some vegetables there. Um, but, you know, it's not an awful lot of room to, to store stuff. So we have got a very small amount of stuff, just two small bags in the engine room of dried things, um, just to make sure we have got enough for a week. So I had to call in at uh, the supermarket this morning. Now this doesn't, it's not a great picture, but actually uh, it's showing me that the car park is much busier than usual. This is the very quiet supermarket. So this is the fruit and veg aisle, which you can see there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff missing. The milk that's more empty and they've got a great deal on pasta look two for a pound can't actually get any so even you know in a quiet place uh, the panic buying is having a bit of an impact now obviously the thing that's been greatly talked about is self-isolating so if you've got any symptoms of, at all um you're supposed to self-isolate um, for a minimum of seven days after the symptoms have gone um, and you know you'll have heard there are um, plans afoot there's a lot of talk about um, the over 70s um, distancing themselves self-isolating for perhaps up to four months now although that doesn't um, affect us there are a lot of people uh, on boats who that will affect um, and although you are quite isolated from the outside world on a boat um, if one person becomes affected um, isolating from other members of the family which is what they're telling people in houses to do you know shut yourself off in a in a separate room even that in houses is difficult to do if you've only got one bathroom um, and things like that um, but on a boat um, you'll see it's a, it's a different matter entirely Self-isolating um, wouldn't wouldn't be easy. I mean, how can you self-isolate when you've got one bedroom? It uh, hasn't even got a, a door on it to, to shut it off from the rest of the boat. Uh, obviously, for, for three adults, we've only got the one bathroom. There's my, my stash of um, panic-bought toilet rolls. Look, I've, I've got a grand total of five toilet rolls. Um, and, and that'll be fine. That'll last us. I'm sure it will. Um, but as you can see, you know, it's it's like living in a, a long tube. So self-isolating would not be uh, an easy ask. With three of us living on the boat, obviously Neil and I sleep in the bedroom at the back. Sam sleeps on this sofa bed. Um, opens out and, and makes a double bed. Um, we have got two sofa beds um, so I mean we could all sleep on separate ones if necessary but you're still in the same tube so you're not really um, self-isolating at all so I think really all we can do is is just be as sensible as we can follow all the guidelines keep washing our hands keep everything as clean as possible um, don't um, you know go out to um, gatherings that we don't have to neil and sam still have to go to work so there's not much point in me isolating myself um sam works in an insurance call center and there has been talk of of them setting up for them to be able to work at home but that's not currently the case uh, but it looks like that may come in um in a couple of weeks neil there's no way he could work from home um and to be honest he works for a very f small family company who depending on how this goes could go out of business anyway um, so you know they have to keep going to work um, and we just have to take the best precautions that we can the same as everybody else so you know do just do everything that you need to do to keep yourself safe to keep your families safe um, and and hopefully we'll we'll all get through this um, Hopefully the next video will be a little bit more cheery, um, hope, hoping things will have improved as they have in, in other parts of the world slowly. Um, so just thanks for watching, stay safe, stay well and I'll see you next time.